Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 10th of October, and we're in the 27th week of the church's year, and today's a ferrier. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Galatians, chapter 3, verses 22 to 29, and it contains the verse which, in my humble opinion, has caused more change in history than any other sentence that I can think of. I'll say more in the reflection, but here's the whole of the reading. Scripture makes no exceptions when it says that sin is master everywhere. In this way, the promise can only be given through faith in Jesus Christ and can only be given to those who have this faith. Before faith came, we were allowed no freedom by the law. We were being locked down after till faith was revealed. The law was to be our guardian until the Christ came and we could be justified by faith. Now that, that that time has come, we are no longer under the guardian, and you are, all of you, sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. All baptized in Christ, you have all clothed yourselves in Christ, and there are no more distinctions between Jew and Greek, slave and free, male and female, but all of you are one in Christ Jesus. Merely by, long, by belonging to Christ, you are the posterity of Abraham, the heirs he was promised. The word of the Lord. In the Gospel is a short one from Luke chapter 11, 20, verses 27 and 28. As Jesus was speaking, a woman in the crowd raised her voice and said, Happy the womb that bore you and the breasts that you sucked. But he replied, Still happier those who hear the word of God and keep it. The Gospel of the Lord. There's so much to talk about today. There are actually three <coughs> secondary memorials. Saint-Denis, middle of the second, third century, who brought the Gospel from Rome to Paris. And he was the one who the first preached the Gospel in Paris. Um, and was a martyr there. Second one is St. John Leonardi, 16th century, and he was a chemist before he became a priest and preached the gospel in a way that really revolved around trying to bring Luca, beautiful city in Italy, closer to the gospel. And lastly, St. Paulinus. He was an Italian who St. Gregory sent to Rome after St. Augustine came. And he was perhaps one of the greatest evangelists we've ever had in England. He travelled up and down England, converting, preaching, building monasteries. Eventually he became the Bishop of Rochester and died there. But certainly a great example of a preacher. <clears throat> but to come back to the first reading, Galatians. It's that phrase, you all are people who have been clothed in Christ. And that's the reference to the white garment that everybody puts on at their baptism. And in Christ there is no longer Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free. And that particular sentence has been the basis of the Christian vision, which has driven so much in terms of policy, in terms of belief across the world, that we must all treat each other as brothers and sisters, all equal in Christ. It's the basis, too, of the Pope's recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, where he's saying all brothers and sisters, we're all one in Christ. 
I grew up in South Africa and in the church this idea that um, there is no more slave nor free, no more uh, Jew nor Greek. So it all depends, it doesn't matter what your religion is, it doesn't matter what your colour is, it doesn't matter what your gender is, we're all one in Christ. <clears throat> Across the world the, the church is still fighting to make this come true and of course the recent uh, awareness that began in America but has spread across the world, Black Lives Matter, all stems from this belief that we are one in Christ, that we are one human race, and that God made us one. The Gospel, short as it is, is relevant here. Jesus, in a sense, is referring back to his mother, who's at the Annunciation says, Thy will be done. And Jesus, when he's told that the womb that bore him and the breast that he sucked are blessed, he says, rather the will, the one who keeps the will of God, like his mother did, like Mary did. And the lesson to all of us is to keep the will of God. It's a prayer we include it in the Our Father, Thy will be done. But there's a particular focus today, this emphasis on that we're all, all human beings are one in Christ. There's no longer Jew nor Greek, male nor female, slave nor free, but we are one in Christ. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response is, my soul glorifies the Lord. My soul glorifies the Lord. From all eternity, God chose Mary to be the mother of Christ. Therefore, she is above all other creatures, both in heaven and on earth. With her we proclaim... My soul glorifies the Lord. Father, your son Jesus gave his mother to the church, a perfect example of faith. May we accept your word in faith as she did. My soul glorifies the Lord. Mary listened to your voice and brought your word into the world. By answering your call, may we too bring your son to men and women. My soul glorifies the Lord. You strengthened Mary to stand at the foot of the cross and filled her with joy at the resurrection. By her intercession, lighten our sorrow and reinforce our hope. My soul glorifies the Lord. And as Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. Lord God, source and origin of our salvation, make our lives here on earth so proclaim your glory, that we may praise you without ceasing in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a good day. Bye.